In this video, we are going to be talking about coding a generic version of gradient descent. By that, we mean that our data has more than one feature and thus we have to handle it accordingly. So okay, let's get started. Obviously, we're going to be needing some libraries. So let's start by importing all the required libraries. Specifically, we are going to be requiring NumPy and Pandas. Right? Then let's start by loading our data. So let me show you what the data looks like. So this is the data here. It has been taken from the scikit-learn library and it is the housing data set. So the only difference here is that I have already split this data into training and testing data. So what you see here is the training data. It has 379 rows, so 379 training data points. And it has 13 features with an extra column for the target variable Y. All right, so let's load our data data is going to be uh, let's load it it's named train.csv the delimiter is going to be a comma right we can convert this data into a pandas data frame and let's see what the data looks like Alright, so here's the data and now we need certain things, we, we need to uh, extract certain things from this data. So for our x, our x array, we are require, going to be requiring all these features from 0 to 12 and for our y, we require this 13th column, right? So our x is going to be data.iloc, all the rows and all the columns from 0 to 12. So our x looks like this now. All right, and now we need to add an extra feature by ourselves, which will contain all the values by one. So I hope you know what I'm doing and why I'm doing that. There we go, we have added an extra feature one. All right, now we can convert this into a numpy array. So it's easier to work with numpy array x. That great. And now let's do the same for y. I'm going to directly convert that into numpy array data dot i lock all the rows and column 13. Correct. Um, yeah, so here's our y. All right, so now we're done loading our data and now let's start coding the gradient descent function gradient descent right let's define it as a gd it will require the data obviously uh, the parameters mm, it will require the learning rate alpha and also the number of iterations so i'm going to name it as iter value and let's defer uh, do the running gradient descent section first running gradient descent so initially, let's uh, initialize all the parameters to zero. So params equals np dot zeros and 14 here because we have 13 features and extra uh, parameter, the intercept parameter to find. So thus, we have a total of 14 parameters to find. Learning late, we have to experiment with this, what works best for our data. Um, right now, let's uh, keep it at 0.01. Then iter value, we can change this later. For now, let's keep it at 100. Okay, and we'll get our parameters from the gradient descent function. So data, data is x here. We pass the params, pass the learning rate, we pass the iter value. Right, we get our parameters, and at the very end, we can print the parameters to see what our optimal uh, parameters look like. All right. Uh, now let's start coding with our gradient descent function. So we are going to be requiring a mean for loop. So for i in range, iter value. Now in each iteration, we are going to be passing through our data once. So for j in range, uh, 379, because we have 379 training data points. Okay, 
and in each training in each row we are going to be passing through all the features once all the parameters once so for k in range um, 14 right and now we can uh, let's obtain our derivative term so slopes and we re will require 14 slopes for 14 parameters so what is the derivative term all right so here is the derivative term and we update theta j by this rule well not actually by this rule that's very important to note here because we update our theta j our theta j equals theta j minus learning rate into this term so this is the derivative term uh, that is 1 over m summation hypothesis minus y and we multiply that by the jth feature in the ith row this part here is important so jth feature in the ith row and where our hypothesis is theta transpose x right so let's code that so for obtaining slopes sub k because our variable here is k so for obtaining slope sub k we do um, 1 over 379 uh, 1 over 379 because we have 379 training data points here we multiply that by the hypothesis and hypothesis is going to be data data the jth row so we are in the jth row for data right and we multiply that by the current parameters and we obtain a sum of it to get our hypothesis from this we subtract the actual value of y right and finally multiply this by the kth feature in the jth row right kth feature in the jth row all right so this is what our slopes look like looks like so after obtaining slopes at the end of each iteration because this is implementation of a batch gradient descent not stochastic gradient descent so that's why we are also adding up our slopes right uh, so at the very end we can update our parameters so parameters equal params minus l rate multiply by params right we can do that because these are numpy arrays and uh, at the very end of this function we can return our optimal parameters to actually see the cost decreasing we can also print the cost after each iteration so print cost we have to define the cost function it will require the data and parameters so for that to work let's define the cost function cost function right def cost it will require the data and the params so let the total cost initially be zero right and for i in range 379 uh, total cost plus equals 1 over 379 we can do that 1 over 2 m or 1 over m uh, doesn't really make a huge difference so let's just stick with 1 over 379 uh, multiply that by hypothesis minus yi so hypothesis is again going to be data sub i multiply that by the params current params sum we get our hypothesis from this subtract the actual y value and raise this whole term to the second power and we get our total cost after running through the while loop and at the very end obviously we can return the total cost all right so i think this is ready to go i hope there is no mistake in this so let's run this all right so um let me see so i think the issue here is that yeah we'll have to use some brackets here right because when i'm writing dot sum i think it's taking the sum of only the parameters factor uh, parameters array we don't want that to happen right so that should work fine now uh, also will require that brackets now here as well because obviously and um, all right so that's fixed as well let's see if we have any other issue um all right so uh, yeah we do have an issue here uh, this should be params equals params minus learning rate into the slopes not the params that doesn't make any sense right so learning rate into slopes and now it should work fine right so let's uh, run this now okay so our, our cost is decreasing 
it's all bit it's decreasing by a very small amount so we'll have to uh, increase the learning rate and here are here are the optimal parameters that we have obtained so let, let's tweak the learning rate um, let's uh, fix at 0 0.1 right they're decreasing much faster now great great yeah, so 24 23 all right and here are parameters now let's see if we can increase the learning rate even more uh, ideally I should multiply this by 5 but uh, let's just do uh, multiply this by 10 so yeah 1 let's see if we are overshooting on that yeah we are overshooting on that so our cost went from 641 to 6 16 530 so that's not good and all right so we have gone here to 10 raised to power 87 so right we have overshot too much so zero one learning rate is too much so let's try 0 0.3 that's decreasing and decreasing much faster in fact all right all right all right right so we have our parameters here so that's it that's how you code a generic version of gradient descent right now there are some things i want to talk about so you can um, experiment with different learning rates and different tighter values but in our case that would be um, doesn't make much sense because at the end of 100 we are barely decreasing our cost by a small amount so it doesn't matter much but you can try it yourself um, the second thing is uh, trying out different implementations of gradient descent right so what we did here is uh, called a batch gradient descent right because we are passing through all of our data at once and at the end of each iteration we are updating our parameters right a different approach is called a stochastic gradient descent in that uh, after each we calculate slope for each training data point and update our parameter after each training data point right so that's one way of doing that uh, the thing is sometimes uh, your uh, path to the convergence to the global minima can be a little noisy but in many cases it does help to converge to the global minima uh, faster than batch gradient descent uh, another implementation can be mini batch gradient descent so right now we are passing through all of our data at once in mini batch implementation you um, like uh, you calculate the slopes for some amount of data so for like you can calculate it for 20 rows at once then update your parameters another 20 rows and then update your parameters so all of these are different implementations of gradient descent you can uh, all you have to do is try and test and find out which works better right that's the only option of doing that uh, so that's how you can do it also you can apply feature scaling and all of other things to uh, converge to a global minima faster so that's that and yeah at the end this is how you code a generic version of gradient descent right so thanks for watching this video